presentation. Uh, I will talk about of the preparation of H15 superconductors, specifically niobium-3 gallium and niobium-3 aluminum, and the mix of aluminum gallium and niobium by a new technique that is electromagnetic induction heating. My work team is uh, Antonio Rossi and the Professor Palmieri. So first of all, I will talk, uh, I will give you an introduction of the common techniques that uh, in, is using to prepare these binary or ternary compounds. Then I will talk about uh, our electromagnetic induction heating technique. Then I will talk about the, the samples preparation and the heat treatment performance. Then we will see if our technique have uh, a validation for prepare this uh, kind of superconductors. Then our um, goal is uh, real to precipitate, precipitate the A15 superconductor on 6 gigahertz niobium cavities. Um, finally, our conclusions. So, uh, the common technique used is to prepare A15 superconducting phase that everybody knows our melting process, chemical vapor deposition, sputtering, etc. So they are also more specialized techniques, so has a melting a spin quenching, a where Clemente reports for niobium trigallium 20 kelvins, for vanadium trigallium 15 kelvin, and for niobium tri aluminum 18.4 uh, kelvin. Our uh, electromagnetic induction technique proposed rapid heating, high temperatures during annealing process on, uh, up to 3000 Celsius, vacuum less, self heating of the samples, short time of treatment, clean quartz chamber, and uh, it's an economic system. So, our real goal after all the preliminary studies is to apply or precipitate this A15 uh, superconductor phase on 6 gigahertz niobium cavities. So this is uh, the sketch of our uh, induction heating system. So we have a quart tube. When we place the, the sample or in the future the cavity is centered in a, a coil where we induct a current, a current, a current and this make the uh, to heat the sample. So we change, uh, we, sorry, we control the temperature, changing the voltage and, and time with the power supply. All the system is an environment, an inert environment, using argon or helium gas. So before to anneal, annealing the samples, we treat chemical treat with BCP solution in order to prepare the surface. Then, uh, how we perform this uh, annealing? We start with the first configuration, that means niobium, niobium, um, gallium or aluminum, and then um, niobium. And the second configuration, just we have uh, one extract of uh, uh, gallium or aluminum on niobium substrate. So for binary compounds, we use liquid gallium and aluminum foil only with the <coughs> configuration one. And for ternary compounds, we only <coughs> we use configuration one and two. And we prepare a paste that is, is made of a liquid gallium and aluminum foil. The most uh, common heat treatment reported to precipitate A15 superconductor is called a uh, rapid heating, quenching, and transformation. This means that we have to anneal to higher temperature for short time to uh, synthesize the niobium aluminum or niobium gallium supersaturated BCC solid solution. And after we have to transform this initial um, phase in A15. So we have to anneal for a long time this is more or less the temperature in order to transform this uh, initial uh, phase. So to see if our techniques is validate, we prepare 
uh, in total 61 samples, which corresponds uh, 10 for niobium gallium system, 6 for niobium aluminum, and 45 for niobium aluminum gallium. We measure the critical temperature with an inductive uh, equipment. So we start with binary compost. How we said before, we use the configuration number one. Uh, we can know that uh, all the superconducting transitions that we found uh, are near to 12 Kelvin. And for naive tree gallium, seems sharp, while for naive tree aluminum, seems uh, quite broad. However, we can see that uh, uh, the difficult to synthesize binary compounds is related to the competition for the more, more stable phases, such as sigma, sigma phase and alpha phases. Because in the phase diagram, the A15 is only stable in a narrow region of the phase diagram. So it's very easy that in, with the annealing, you can, when, for example, you quench and you can shift the safe very easily. Uh, Sorry. Samples are needed that not reach temperatures higher than, than 1,500. One we only find niobium superconductor transition. The results suggest that the annealing process for a long period, around 10 minutes, at high temperatures degrades the superconducting phase initially, initially formed. I say that because uh, uh, we, we see that the uh, superconductive transition uh, is present, but the critical temperature is low that is reporting on literature. So during the long time, we uh, give more time to the gallium or aluminum atom diffuse on a yovion surface. The patterns of X-ray diffraction we can see here for niobium 3 gallium, the main planes are present. And if we compare the lattice parameters with the standard value, it's very close. While for uh, niobium 3 aluminum, we also see the, the main uh, plane of diffraction, but uh, the lattice parameter is much higher than the standard value. <coughs> so for our first attempt of A15 phase, we can conclude. Critical temporal results suggest higher diffusion of gallium atoms than aluminum atoms on ionium samples at the same heating con conditions. Uh, this is consistent with the corrosive properties of gallium. <laughs> Also, we have wettability problems with liquid gallium, which make the preparation of the sample before the heat, before heat treatment. Sorry, wettability problems with liquid gallium, which make the preparation of the sample before the heat treatment difficult. So, also we see that uh, very short times for the heat treatment is necessary. So, for this, we propose the ter ternary compounds. So we found very sharp and high transition, that the highest transition we, we measure 18 uh, with a width of 0 0.35 Kelvin. So this is a great result. It, it means that direct transformation of A15 phase from higher temperature of niobium samples. And tenary compound seems to stabilize the A15 phase. So here, sorry, I say the first this um, graph is at with this configuration, close configuration. Then we try down an open <coughs> configuration, but seems like it start with higher transition, but then became broad. So we can say that some uh, gallium or aluminum evaporates. So we have less control of the stoichiometry. So this means further studies are required in order to establish a relation of the quantity of aluminum gallium evaporated. Also, we have the partner of this uh, mix of niobium aluminum gallium. Uh, we find the main uh, plane of diffraction, but is missing the main of the, this 
plane of diffraction for an iodium 3 gallium and iodium 3 aluminum. The lattice parameter, how we expect it, is between of an iodium 3 gallium and iodium 3 aluminum. This is how we lose the curve of temperature versus time, and the heating rate is uh, 90 Celsius per second, and the cooling rate 15 Celsius per second. So taking the best uh, or the highest superconductive transition, we see with the SEM, and we can see the configuration of uh, flows, niobium, niobium aluminum gallium, and niobium. And we measure in different points, random, the chemical composition. And we we'll find a uh, principal niobium in this percent, gallium, aluminum but also uh, oxygen. However, if we take into account the, the composition um, without oxygen and compare with the phase diagram, we can see we have precipitate A15 and A2 phases. This is how it looks the microstructure. Niobium looks more granular or like a sponge and the niobium aluminum gallium looks more flat, flat, flatter. This is going deeper. This is uh, in this point, upper and down between the, the two interfaces. So niobium aluminum ga gallium, since um, smooth the, the microstructure, and the niobium looks more granular. Also to understand the distribution of how was the diffusion of the gallium aluminum on, on the inter interface, we perform a mapping. Here there are the colors that attribute these signals and these are the, the quantities of X-rays. So here, this is the interface okay, that we analyzed. This part is niobium and this part is the diffusion of the system aluminum gallium um, niobium. So if we can see here the pixel is brighter. So here is practically uh, pure niobium and here if we compare with the signal of gallium seems that the gallium diffuses so fast creating a, a channel or goes uh, between the grain bordering. The aluminum seems that uh, diffuse quite uniform we find oxygen in both in niobium and superconducting layer. Then if we compare gallium with niobium, we see green, how diffuse the gallium, preferentially in the bordering grains, and the al aluminum seems quite uniform, but anyway, initially take the same path that the gallium. Uh, if we compare the gallium and aluminum signals, we see it's more uniform aluminum, but uh, also we have a nucleation of uh, gallium. If we, we mix all the system gallium, aluminum, um, gallium, aluminum, niobium, we see this is niobium pure. This is how diffuse the, the aluminum. And we also here see how nucleate the, the gallium. And this is all the mix, looks like a carnival, but we found oxygen everywhere and the mix of all the systems. However, we did this real to try to precipitate A15 um, superconductors on uh, 6 giga niobium cavities. So before coating, we treat with centrifugal tumbling. Uh, then we perform the chemical treatment, BCP solution after high pressure water reason. So how we try to apply the gallium or um, aluminum, we introduce, the in this case, we introduce only liquid gallium and we use a rotor, close it, to try to uh, beat adherence to stick the gallium on the niobium surface. Then we also use it, this, uh, how can I say, media, to try to apply the liquid gallium or paste. And after we perform the heat treatment. 
So our results um, were not su su satisfactory because we first of all melt the cavity, we destroy it, uh, and the cavities that we perform the heat treatments, we measure and um, they, they, they were there were a normal conductor. This is our uh, temp the maximum temperature that we can measure, but ha however, we find difficult to set uh, or control the temperature when we change the voltage and time. So if we cut the, a piece in the, in the, on the equator of the cavity, we cut, uh, anyway, we try to see, understand what happened, but we don't find any superconductor transition, only niobium. So we can conclude that for samples, we find a direct transition of the superconducting phase from high temperatures using the electromagnetic induction heating. The temperature of the sample are very sensitive by changing the voltage and time. time sorry. This means that we have to control very well the, um, the position, the, uh, the mass of the sample because the heat we will be different if we hit a small sample that a, a big cavity. And iodine aluminum gallium stabilizes the 15 superconducting phase, and the best configuration is niobium plus aluminum gallium niobium, which avoid the evaporation of gallium and aluminum at high temperatures. This means that we have more control that with the open configuration, and we can find sharp high superconducting transition. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Any questions for Andrea? Mm -hmm. uh, um, What's next? What are you going to write now? Okay. Um, first of all, we have to change the system. Because for samples, when you quench, that is very important in the heat treatment to avoid the shift of the A15 phase. For example, it's quite easy because the volume is, is very fast, the dissipation of the heat. And for a cavity, it's very, we need a, a new quenching system. Means that we, instead of to use a jet of uh, gallium, uh, sorry, a helium or argon, we can use maybe quenching on water, something like that. And uh, also we have to be care, be carefully about the, the, the measurement of the cavity because if you set the same, the same voltage and time for one cavity to another one, but the, the dimensions are different, the heat or the temperature that you will reach will be different. So the diffusion can, can can change the mechanics or the